amazing level design to amazing secrets and amazing soundtrack and basically everything else being amazing, Astrobot reminded me why I fell in love with video games in the first place. This game is just so charming. Like, that's the best word to describe this video game. Charming. Everything about it is just amazing. If you are one of the many people who have played this game already, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. From the moment you entered Sky Garden and you listened to that head bopping song and found the, uh, found some bots and you just went through the level like not expecting much from an Astrobot game and you just experienced one of the best opening levels in video game history. Yes, I stand by that fact. <laughs> and then it just goes on, about five to six worlds of many PlayStation references, rescuing almost about 200 to 300 bots and, you know, playing as other PlayStation characters as well. Like, there are, there's many points where Astrobot becomes Kratos, he, he becomes Alloy. Like, there are many creative levels in this game. There's a level where you have to hunt down monkeys. I'm not even joking. <laughs> if I had to pick a favorite level in the entire game, oh my god, it's a very tough choice. I have two personal favorites. The first, Sky Garden, my, my, in my opinion, one of the best opening levels in gaming history, and also Slow Mo Casino, because a casino level has never been this creative before, and the uh, power up to stop time was the perfect power up to use for this kind of level, because you know all the casino coins flying all over the place, and you have to jump on them like platforms. And it's just creative. And speaking of power-ups, this game has a lot of great power-ups. Many of the suits from Astro's Playroom have now been replaced with just, you know, an animal buddies. Like, you know, the monkey, the inflatable dude, uh, the, the PSVR, uh, or ironically, and, and so many other things. There's a dog as well, and a chicken. Like, there are so many other power-ups, like, like many other animals you can use as power-ups, so, uh, excuse me. And they're all amazing to play as. Like, I would not be, like, I, I cannot pick a favorite. Every single level utilizes their abilities perfectly. There isn't a single level where I were, like, let's say, for example, I have the PSVR, but I wish the level had the dog instead. There's not a single level that acts like that in Astro, in Astrobot, and I love it for that. Also, the crash site is a great place to go back to over and over. You can find many bots in that area as well. And it's just fun seeing all of uh, the bots that you've uh, found uh, team up to help you get through many obstacles and stuff like that. So it's it's very charming. Like going back to the idea of it being a charming game. Like that incorporation of teamwork is just great. This is, this is the place where you'll put many of the parts you find in the levels back into the PS5. And then you will be able to uh, go and fight this green alien dude. And also, I will not spoil the final boss because I'm not sure how many people have completed this game yet and don't want to be spoiled. But I would just say the final boss is by far one of the best final bosses I have ever played in any video game ever. If you guys have played the game, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like that entire final sequence of the game is just mesmerizing. Uh, and that final cutscene as well, just to put it all together, just mwah, chef's kiss. If you if you played it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Everybody else, you need to play that. If you if somehow you're watching my video right before you play the final boss, I'm telling you, play it after finishing this video. You're gonna have the time of your life. So as far as a rating for Astrobot goes, I was contemplating many ratings. I was thinking of a nine, a nine point five, and a ten. Nothing below a 9, like many of the reviews I talked about in a previous video. And it was very hard because I found uh, like some nitpicky stuff, but when I put it all together, I realized something. I realized something big in my opinion. I didn't remember any of the nitpicky stuff. Yeah, there's many times where, I, where I'll be watching a movie or the episode of a TV show, and I will just remember the nitpicky stuff because they really stood out. But I feel like with Astrobot, those nitpicky stuff are just like ways to like put make like spice up the adventure I guess I'm not sure like I'm even stuttering just thinking about it because it just makes my head go round and round and round like the wheels of a bus so in that context I feel like the game is just perfect with like almost no flaws and that's why I've made my I've made my decision to give this game a solid 
layer of 10 pancakes. That's right, I'm giving this game a 10 out of 10. If you guys have not played this yet, you have to absolutely play it. If you have a PlayStation 5, then you can please go find this game. You don't need to pick up the controller. I played this with a standard controller. The controller is just like, it's just a way to make you appreciate the game even more. I mean, uh, I did not buy the controller because that's way too over my budget, <laughs> but, and, and also because I just didn't need it. But looking back on it, I probably should have bought the controller because of how much I loved this game after playing it for like almost a week now. So yeah, I probably should have bought the controller. You need to play this game. This is the game that Sony will look at. They will read the reviews. They will see the millions and millions of units this game will sell. I mean, if it does sell well, I'm begging everybody, please buy this game and make it sell more, uh, make it sell like millions of copies. Because Sony will look at that information as well as the critic reviews. And who knows, th this game might even get nominated for game of the year. I want it to happen, by the way. I want, I want it to happen so bad. And they will look at it and say, you know, we don't have a lot of exclusive games and I feel like these are the type of games we need to make more of. Not not just in the 3D platforming genre. Like, of course, this is a 3D platforming game, but this type of game, the one that is charming, one that has great levels, one that has like even like great storytelling, despite having like m very minimal of it, but making it like a big aspect of the game in general. All of this combined, as well as beautiful graphics, by the way, like playing this playing this thing in 4K, it's just amazing. Like this thing is this thing is beautiful to look at, especially that can see a casino level. Those coins look almost semi-realistic. And speaking of semi-realistic, I think this is the perfect time to talk about the PS5 Pro since I didn't make a video on it. And it's simply because I just don't care about the thing. 700 bucks is outstandingly bad, especially when you Look back at that presentation. You will see that there are very minor differences. Like, the only way you can uh, notice the difference is if you squint your eyes and look at it for like more than 30 seconds. Everyone else, including myself, we just don't care and we are happy with our current PlayStation 5s. These are the type of games we need more of. I hope Sony will look at this and will go, wow, so these are the type of games people want more of, and we're gonna give them exactly that. I hope Sony does that, because they have amazing games. Like, they have some great first-party games, and they have a lot of IPs, so why not use them? In fact, like, go back to the past, like, bring back Sly Cooper once again. I think a lot of people will like that. A Sly Cooper game on, on PlayStation 5, that'd be actually pretty dope. So, yeah, this game, might accidentally revive PlayStation, <laughs> the, the, the whole PlayStation brand, and I am more than here for it. So with that being said, please play this game. Please play it. Peace.